Pimpy Man is back. Oh, I'm getting tired. Jay Force, try it again. Oh my God, the man got messed up. This is a five out of freaking five. It is beat making time. Next week is E3 week. My album comes out next week. I have to live it. Oh, look at that, my God. This is your point. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Dash the True Inferno. <laughs> and yes, it's part two of the GameStop Sucker Life fiasco. So if you recall last week, GameStop, the corporation, are forcing GameStop, the employees, to lie to GameStop's customers. See what I did there? <laughs> so... That basically, um, the corporation forcing the employee to lie to their customers regarding new and pre-owned games. And if they don't do that, then these employees will lose hours and to most cases lose their jobs. And there are stories out there online. And I even shared some of those stories with y'all last week about current and former employees dealing with this program and how it is at the extreme. And how they don't like it. It is not a good place to work at. But, like I said last week, as I was giving y'all my two cents on this whole fiasco, I also said last week that I was going to cover the actual Circle Life program itself and how it's actually good to customers. Now, before you do anything else, after hearing me say that, I recommend you, if you did not see part one of this video, go watch part one. There, I talk about the actual corporation forcing the employees to lie about customers and how I feel about them doing that and how I'm against that. But this video is about how the Circle Life program is actually good. Because even prior to this, there's a whole bunch of people who complain about GameStop, how they trying to get you to uh, sign up to their Power Rewards card, how to get to the pre-order, all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, some of that stuff is actually good for you, though. So, but let me break this down, though. Um, if you're one of those people who want less bang for your buck, who don't want to deal with any nonsense, just want to walk in, get your game, walk out, things of that nature, go to Best Buy, go to Target, go to Walmart, go to Toys R Us, you know, go to other places that sell video games because nine times out of 10, the employees who are working that video game department, if there is one, do not know a damn thing about games and do not care about what you buy. They just want you to buy and get out. They just want what you want. You want to go in and get your thing and get out. They want you to buy and get out. So that's a two-way street right there that y'all can relate to. So go to those places. If you just want to go in and get a game and get out, if you want to go in and get an accessory and get out, you need to hit up Best Buy. You need to hit a Target, Walmart, so forth, whatnot. Now, you could get lucky with Best Buy, especially Best Buy. You could get lucky there and Target. I mean, not Target, but Toys R Us, rather. Where you walk in, they have a video game spot, and there's somebody there who actually knows something about video game. More so with Best Buy than Toys R Us, but 100% of the time, no. So, like I said, if you want to go in, get your game and get out, you want less bang for your buck, hit up those places. But if you want more bang for your buck, you want to talk to somebody who is knowledgeable in video games, things of that nature, yeah, then you need to hit up GameStop. So let's talk about the Circle of Life program, how it's good for customers. And I'm going to start off with what I believe is like the first step, which is, I try to think, what did I say last week? I think I said pre-own. It's either pre-own or pre-orders. It, like, it, it could be either one. Either one could start off the Circle of Life program. But for the sake of this argument, we're going to start off with pre-own. Because that's the number one thing that a lot of people tend to dislike that in pre-orders, by the way. But... With pre-owned, depending on what it is, like, because nowadays, nobody is using compact disc to put their games in. You know, the last uh, company that did that was Xbox with the Xbox 360. They moved on from that. They're now in Blu-ray. Everybody is on freaking Blu-ray. So, if you worry about, oh, this game is too scratched up, it won't work. Nah, that ain't the case no more. Unless somebody straight up took their keys, and just hack and slash their shit. <laughs> that is the only way. Other than that, no. It's strictly Blu-ray. It will straight up work for the most part. And in case, you know, in case yours don't work, you have a return policy with pre-owned. 
You know, you got seven days to bring the shits back and either get something different or get your money back. I mean, it's that simple. Just don't lose your receipt. But it's just that simple. So, now granted, you may say, well, I don't want to drive all the way back or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Well, I mean, you can take it at any GameStop store for starters. But if you don't want to drive back to begin with, then, I mean, I don't know what to say. Then sacrifices must be made. You better drive your ass back <laughs> if the game don't work. Now, pre-owned game systems, okay, I can understand that one to some degree. Um, but nowadays, nowadays, when GameStop... And, and let me break this down for you real quick. When GameStop employees buy back systems... They test them out right there and then. And if they get back a system and it looks crappy as hell, I'm letting you know right now, they are not going to test out a crappy ass system because that's too much work for them. So they're either going to say, okay, we could take this back, but it's refurbished, but we're going to refurbish, send it to the warehouse, and the warehouse will fix it if they can. Or they just going to say, we can't take this shit. <laughs> So yeah, they being lazy in a in a beneficial way for you, the customer. So <laughs> not in the not the customer who's trying to trade in, but the customer who want to buy a pre-owned system. But in the most part, they will not for the most part, but a hundred percent of the time they will check these systems, see if they work, and if they don't work, they will refurbish it and send it off to headquarters where they'll fix it or try to fix it or whatever. And if they do work, then it works. So what's the, there's no big deal. And again, but like I, like I said, I, when it comes to, I recommend getting a new system. I get that. But when it comes to the actual games, it's themselves. I recommend getting a pre-owned game because, you know, yeah, you save money. And there's a return policy. With the brand new games, there's no return policy with that shit. Once you tear off that plastic, you're stuck with it. There's no, you know, I mean, there, yeah, you could get away with like, oh, you know, whatever excuse you have. And they'll refund you in some manner. But for the most part, there's no return policy. And that's not just for games. That's everywhere you go. Best Buy, Target, Walmart, it don't matter. You know, video game, anything entertainment rise, unless it's an accessory, there is no return policy on those. Now, moving on from pre-owned to the Power Rewards card. Now, the card is, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the card. Because first off, it's like, yeah, it's $15 a year. It's not like, oh, they're going to take $15 every year off your credit or anything like that. No, it's just a year. And then you have the option yourselves of either continuing it or just say, no, I'm good. And then just let it expire. Now, what the card do is it gives you 10% off of all used games for the whole year. So if you just buy games once or twice a year, I wouldn't even get it. Don't, don't get it. But if you buy games like that, then, yeah, you should think about getting it. And here's another thing. The, the card costs $15 to get, but, and, like, forget the magazines. Nobody, nobody give a damn about the magazines. It's all about the card. Like I was saying, the card costs 15 bucks to get, but you could pay less than 15 to get it. So you're probably wondering, how is that possible? Well, let me give you a, a example. Let's say... You want to get three games that just came out, but you want to pre-own, you know, because you, you don't mind buying pre-owned games or whatever. So these pre-owned games are 55 each. So we talking like 55, 50, that's 110, $165 right there. Now, when you get the car with that, the car takes effect immediately. So it knocks 10% off of $165 on the spot. So, yeah. The car is $15, but because it takes effect immediately, it's going to knock off $16.50 off of those three games total. Therefore, to get the car, GameStop will pay you $1.50. So it's like, is the car worth it? Yeah, but I would not recommend just straight up walk in and say, hey, I want the car and pay $4.15 for it. No, get like two used games for it. And then, you know, when you get the car, you get to buy two used games, get one free fiasco. And then all you got to do is like, Sign up online within a day or so. Come back with that receipt, and then you get a free game. You know that third game for free. So it's very useful. You plan get to be planning to get two used games that cost like fifty bucks or more or something like that. Come back and get another fifty something or more, or you know fifty something plus you know whatever game for free. And you'll be paying like five bucks for the card, but you'll be getting like a fifty dollar game for free. You know, depending on. What you're getting in the scenario, because as far as that free game goes, 
the cheapest out of the three games will be the free one. I'll let you know that right now. So, yeah, the car, I, rec- I say the car is worth it. But, I, like I said, I would not recommend you just straight up walk in and get it by itself or get something that costs $2 and then say, oh, I want the... No, don't no. Like, wait until you start to spend some money, like, you know, close to three digits. May- matter of fact, I'm going to take that back. If you were planning to spend over fifty dollars, no, not fifty. Let's say seventy-five dollars of pre-owned games and accessories, not systems, because the card won't work on systems. If you're spending seventy-five dollars on pre-owned games and accessories, then you get the card because all you gotta do is just pay like an extra seven dollars and fifty cent for the card, and then you get, you know, that third item for you know a third item for free or whatever. So that's the only time I'll say get the card. If you're buying $75 worth of pre-owned stuff at that exact moment, then you get the card. $75 or more, get the card. Save less than that, that's up to you. Me personally, I'll do it if it's 50 or more, but I recommend 75 or more. Now, moving on to pre-orders. Now, I already did a video about pre-orders. I'm not going to get into that again. Um, But I'm going to try to break it down to the best of my ability. Pre-orders. You get extra stuff. Now, granted, like I said, I don't give a damn about the poster or the keychain, things of that nature. But if it comes like, hey, if you pre-order this game, we'll give you the DLC for free? Why in the hell will you re- turn that down? Not the, Yeah, the DLC or the season pass, why will you turn that down? Because more likely, you're going to be paying extra for that shit. So why turn it down for, like, why turn down the free? You know, if it was for free, don't turn that shit down. So, like, they give you extra in-game content for free. Take that shit. But they give you like a keychain, a poster, then I'll be like, nah, pass, I'm good. So, yeah, there you go with that. And then the last thing on the program are trade-ins. Now, I will admit, I don't mess with trade I don't trade in my games like that. I really don't. So that one's up to you. I, I'm not going to say anything about trade-ins because I normally don't trade in my games. Like, I will do it a few times, but... I don't trade my games in like that. And if you are planning on trading in your games, you better rate for a while. And rate see they have a really good trading bonus. And you need the Power Rewards card because you get 10% more with your trading as well. In addition to whatever bonus they got going on. So don't just walk in at any day of the week and just trade in your games. And do not ask for cash back. Cause it, don't do that. Don't even waste your time. Because you won't get much cash. Store credit, depending on what it is. If there's a trading bonus and things of that nature. But straight up cash... No, don't do it. Now, yeah, once it once in the block blue moon, they changed it where the amount of cash you get, the same amount of tr- um, trading credit you would get as well. I think that's either was like a deal or that's permanent now. I don't know. It's been a minute. But if you, as far as I know, if you walk in trying to trade your money for cash, don't do it at GameStop. And I already explained that as well. So I'm not going to get into that. So, yeah, that's basically the sucker life and how it's basically good for customers as long as GameStop, the corporation, don't try to get their employees to lie to you about used games and new games and things of that nature. And like I said, if you want less bang for your buck and just simply go in and get your game to get out, don't go to GameStop. You better go to any other place that don't give a damn about you and what you want and or the type of game you should get or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Just go, you know, go to those places. But if you're not that knowledgeable about games or a specific game and things that nature and you're trying to save some money or whatever yeah hit up GameStop so yeah there you go with that man y'all know who this is this is the new Jake Gatsby aka the new Stephen A. Smith saying peace out y'all and I'll see y'all next time yeah aside from that to basically say oh we're gonna have it new we only got it used and things that nature no it's stupid and what makes it even more dumb is GameStop will literally fire the employees. Like, there are stories out there um, that other people cover that are online. Uh, GameStop, and story, uh, GameStop employees, past and present, coming out and saying, yeah, the soccer life is at an all-time extreme. There's one story where the store manager, former store manager, will take the bullet.